Well, good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Avatar Face to Face, the uh, arts program uh, that highlights all of the multicultural arts and culture works uh, on a global level. And we are here today to continue our programming as we salute the 50th year of uh, independence for the countries of Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, we are doing that through a program called Carib Gold. Uh, the program is being co-sponsored through a collaboration of uh, the AFWI uh, Cultural Program and the Avatar Foundation. Uh, and we want to thank, we graciously want to thank Ms. Uh, Antoinette Pitkan for pulling uh, this particular program together and working in collaboration with us. And as we continue our show, our programs, uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce and bring uh, to you, our audience, uh, another segment of that and introduce a young man who uh, has built quite a name and reputation for himself. We want to introduce you to Mr. Robert Reed, who is a painter, uh, a visionary, uh, all, of, all of those superlatives that go with that. And I want to just take this moment to say thank you, Robert. How are you? Thank you for having good, me. Good, good. Welcome pleasure. to the show. All right. We, uh, we have a nice show today because we're going to speak about the visual aspects of what it is that we're doing. And part of our programming has been to address the Caribbean art and culture through the eyes of Carnival. And so with that, we have all these different... Uh, arenas that we can play in to see about the visual, get the feel of the food, get the feel of the people, the music, and all that go into Carnival on a worldwide basis. So uh, I want to again thank you and welcome you to the show. And let's, let's kind of open this conversation up so all of our friends can just peek in and listen to what we're talking about. And uh, I'd like to begin uh, this segment with telling uh, our audience a little bit about who Robert Reed is the, the man, the country, the background. Talk to us. All right, that's thank you so much again for having me. Um, to make it simple, Robert Reed, um, the artist, visual artist um, from Trinidad, Belmont. Um, come from a family of musicians as well. I have a brother who is a well-known musician um, by the name of Ron Reed, which deep people know. But myself, in terms of the visual arts, painter, artist, drawer. Uh, now resides in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, New York, um, and doing art uh, is presently focusing on the arts right now and making it a passion and making it a livelihood of what is happening throughout there. Um, after being here for approximately for like about 15 years or so plus, um, mm -hmm. and attending different schools from School of Visual Arts to Art Students League at the present time. Um, and having my work sold throughout the Caribbean as well as international. I am presently just expanding the work throughout the international field um, mm -hmm. and things like that. Okay. Tell us a little bit about, uh, describe your experience uh, in, in the art, uh, in, in the schools that, that you've been in. Just kind of describe. It's one of the things, I don't know if you know it personally, in terms of New York or just New York based, there's a lot of art schools. And when I say a lot in terms of students who want to pursue mm -hmm. art, and when we say art, we can speak about all the five aspects of arts, which you're talking about dance, music, um, theater. Um, if you want to specialize in terms of the visual arts, paintings, drawings, sculptures, we can talk from schools like you know Pratt, we can talk like School of Visual Arts, you can talk to the Academy, New York Academy, mm -hmm. um, and we can all go down. All depends on like what are you proceeding, what are you are you looking for for your degree, a two year pursuit, or are you just becoming to become an artist or practicing artist. Okay. Um, so a lot depends on your personal goal. Mm -hmm. So in terms of that, sometimes you'll find students who have already let's say, come from the Caribbean, who already have an art background, mm -hmm. who just want to expose themselves to, to artists who have studied or who they have seen or expose themselves to study under. Right, uh, right. So that's another thing. So they will take courses or they take workshops in various studios or, or studios, I should say, mm -hmm. um, throughout the tri-state area. And that's one, another aspect of doing. So it's it all different depends a lot on the goals the individual has, he mm -hmm. or she has, and where he or she is in his career. Because sometimes under the umbrella of art, you have so many different levels. So I think if you want to get more detailed, 
first you will say, what are your goals? What are your aspirations? Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can guide you and say, this is what you want to do. Sometimes some people just want a show in New York. Right, right. Okay. People have come from, artists have come from all across the world just to have a show in New York um, mm -hmm. because of being the mecca of New York and what it consists of. Well, g given your experience, uh, who have been the people that influenced you? Uh, in terms of the Caribbean, uh, mm -hmm. good interesting question. Um, in terms of the Caribbean, we can start there. One of the things is that from you have artists from Bosco Holder, you have for Crossing, you have Sandiata, um, you know, in terms of Jamaica, mm -hmm. you have Barry Watson, and we can talk about a few others, but some of those artists throughout time has really stayed the course. And if you know, some of the names might be familiar to, to, you, to you, I don't know if you collect workers yourself, mm -hmm. but in terms of some of the names <coughs> that you might have heard, like Barry Watson for Jamaica, anybody knows he has a legacy of work throughout the Caribbean as well, in terms of if you want to speak from artists from Barbados or we can take Bahamas. Right. There are a lot of people. Some of these have come across here, studied, and come back to the Caribbean has done a, a tremendous, you have, you know, and things like that, Bosco's, mm -hmm. which has mm -hmm. passed away, but he has a tremendous body of work, um, things like that. So for the younger people, you have all these great artists who are there. In terms of if you're looking from a European experience, you, you know, who have studied here, you have another great body of artists as well. Yes, so in, in, in Jamaica, as we, <clears throat> I wanted to kind of get the, 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 the impact of, uh, of, of what you did in Jamaica, and like, again, who influenced you, those, those kind of challenges, uh, and then in terms of uh, how you were able at a later point uh, integrate some of those influences from either Jamaica into what you were doing here uh, in this country, or, or if that at all, you may you may have already been uh, that accomplished. Is in t is spe just to make a quick reference in Trinidad and Tobago, um, we do have an art school that's happening right now, which is at the UWE, um, the Media of Arts. When I left at Trinidad at that time, there was no officially an art school. While in terms of Jam if you want to use a comparison, Jamaica has a former art school, which that's it. right mm -hmm. in Trinidad. We have more, which you want to say, practicing artists who people, you just, you learn the craft and then you decide to go and travel throughout the world. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of things that you have artists who have not been formally trained, who have just learned their craft and have l done it that way. And then you have people who have tr have come abroad, trained, and come back to teach workshops throughout the Caribbean or through Trinidad and Tobago. If you want to speak yes, especially okay. to Trinidad, you have artists who have come back and now open up their workshops and they're teaching workshops for students, things like that. Or if you're attending the University of West Indies, you can do a degree program right now at the University of West Indies. Um, how has it affected me here? Well, now that we are abroad, now we are back in, you know, New York or as you say, White Plains. Um, it has tremendous because that, that strength, that color, that beauty has now reflected and you have something now to show to the mm -hmm. rest of the world. So in yeah. terms of that history, that passion, I mean, you have all that energy and now you have a canvas right. or a language in which to put it into. Okay, okay. Part of what we, were, we are doing, and I keep saying we because there's, there's a collaboration going on, is uh, the ability to showcase <clears throat> uh, uh, arts and culture uh, from different parts of the world. And uh, because our focus this year is uh, on the Caribbean, we were, we're looking then at how, how we best can present that picture. As I shared with you, our efforts this year has been really through the eyes of, uh, of, of Carnival. So when you see Carib Gold and you hear Carnival, then you're really uh, getting the essence of what it is we're trying to reach and share with our, our viewing audience. In terms of the, the types of mediums, I uh, understand uh, you're from your bio, you're really more of a, you, you enjoy the figure painting or figure drawings. Uh, am I presenting that the proper you, way? You're saying right. Okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, why, why that particular medium and, and uh, what that passion looks like in terms of how you deliver and display it. Interesting, um, interesting question and then how it came down to figurative, figurative painting. Um, like most other artists, we have dabbled in other mediums. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, you find, you find, if you want to find your junior, you find your niche. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. if I if I may put it that way. And in doing all that thing, like from photography to wire bending or doing carnival, all those things, and mm -hmm. somehow painting. And one of the things about the actual painting is that I don't know if you can. I'll try to bring it to imagine. I'm giving you a white piece of canvas, and you can take that and put any color any expressions you want that the freedom you have to go left right up down mm -hmm. it's the boundaries are on there then when it comes of figurative painting i do my work as surprise as a figurative artist and one of the things about the figure or the human figure it's on unrelentless in terms of that meaning that we as a people there's so much to say I see. Mm -hmm. there's so much to say and everybody has a language everybody has a story and s technically, to have to be able to tell that story through the eyes, through color, through oils, through the media, mm -hmm. whether it's graphite, whether it's watercolors, whether it's pastels, is a challenge beyond measures. That's and it's, through the years, I've, I have really, and then I, I love people. I think we are people, you know, we are blessed. Sometimes we don't see what we have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as, as you talked earlier about, about carnival and the movement of carnival right. and the whole seeing like 3,000 people enjoying themselves or trying to visualize what it looks like coming down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, from a visual point of view, taking that experience and putting it on a, you know, on a paper or three-dimensional form is, is unexplainable. Mm -hmm. And then later we'll get a chance to see some of, some of my work Yes. in terms of what I do or, or some of the things that I've done. Um, and just a small you know, sample of terms of my expression in terms of some of the other mediums I've worked in. Are there, are there, are there prominent places or places where we can see your work, uh, either uh, on display or uh, within a certain collection somewhere? Yes, I do, <coughs> have, a, I do have a website presently it's happening, okay. which we can give you information a little later in the show um, mm -hmm. as well. Um, also, you can also find me on Facebook. I do shows throughout the, the year with different galleries and things okay. like that. Not one particular gallery I'm based in, so it's usually sometimes I'll get information to do a show next three months or next gotcha. six months. So it all depends on what show is coming up now. There are shows that I do annually. It depends, you know, like there's a show that happens in Harlem. They it's called, it just slipped me, the Black Art Festival. Um, this uh, happens at Riverside Church um, at the oh, end the of Harlem February. Art show. Uh, uh, art yes, show. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. um, it has, that take part as well. So there are projects that are happening mm -hmm. throughout the year that you can find me in. Oh, okay, that's great. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the website, so we'll, we'll have uh, a means for people to reach you. Watercolors, I'm understanding that uh, is, is something that extremely fascinates you. I guess it's the, t talk to me about Kind of why that is more. Yes, I don't know if you have ever painted it. <laughs> you will have to tell us if you well, if you have dabbed I'm, in any I'm, of I'm, the I'm pieces. Not, I'm not. No, I'm not. Let me not even try to, to to front that off. But but very interested in terms of of the skills and interests of artists. Is in terms of this, it's the discipline. It really requires a great deal of discipline. Let's mm -hmm. let's get down to it. It really requires discipline. And when I say discipline, in terms of concentration, mm -hmm. in terms of developing a skill through the years, and if you are looking at, you name it, anything, whether it's whether you did a plant or you want to do a figure, you are taking a three dimensional that subject matter and you are putting it on a piece of paper for the viewer to see it. And then right. you are doing something live, something that is breathing, something that's living. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you are, act then on top of that, you're using a water base medium to try to capture that essence of that individual. Mm -hmm. So with all those elements, it really requires you to be, have a great deal of knowledge, both technically as well as creativity, and okay. putting that in together, and then making it work, the composition, making the composition works. I got you. Okay. So, in terms of the media, watercolors, mm -hmm. it's like, some people call it an unforgiven media because once you start it, put on a layer of wash, you can't erase it like if it's oil, so you can't go I back. See. I see. So, once you put on there, you have to have a pretty good idea of your composition or what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, you have to have a very good sense of a drawing technique or your ability to draw very well, as well as knowing what you're doing. And when I say knowing what you're doing, it seems like less is more. I see, I see. Okay, yeah. Now, how, how long have you been a painter? How long have you been an artist it, in, this, uh, in this format? I would say approximately over 10, 10 to 15 years now. 
Um, of course, I've gone to school, technically, I at see. school, where you have trained, but that still doesn't say you're an artist. You still have to come out to the world and prove to the world that right. you exist. Okay, <laughs> I mean, and, you, okay. and you know that. Yes, <laughs> As, you, know, yes. it's, you, know, you have to say it. You have to say, let's see what you have. And, and also, just share your work with people. I think mm -hmm. a lot of times we have a lot of artists there, but I think the thing about it is sharing your work and letting people see what you're doing. I because you. that communication is, is also important, I believe. You know, and getting get the public to also come out, especially, you know, people of color to show us what is next door, seeing what we are doing. Because so far, sometimes we hear about, we are these artists, and we need to find, and as a good thing, there's something like what you are doing, bringing it to the people, to bring it to the, the people, people yes. and telling them, and says, hey, we have these great artists, talented people, right in your neighborhood, right in our backyards, mm -hmm. and showing them what we are based off. And also international as well, showing them that this is part of it. You know, I guess, yeah. we are so connected that sometimes we forget that. Does a, how, how do you address the question? I guess of what inspires you to do what you're doing and what motivates you uh, to 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 keep going, uh, to, to to keep developing and evolving. A lot of things in terms of the mo coming in terms of the motivation. I think being around really good, positive people. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing about it is that having a chance to experience some of the other greats that we have seen over time, whether you're talking from Winton Marcellus or you're talking to a Peter Minchel or you're talking to a Wayne Barkley or you're talking to a dancer. Like recently I went and see Alvin Ailey. Yes. I mean, if it's a joy to just see. That's you know, right. This, to just to joy to see just them see on the stage. Motion. Just, the motion. Yeah, just so, so when you see, I think there's a lot of positive mm -hmm. things that young people and people in general in the arts are doing. And I mean, if you can't get inspiration from that, I mean, I, I, some, <laughs> okay. I, mean, I think the blood, is, the blood is not happening inside. I got you, I got And you. I think we really have sometimes to step back and realize that there's a lot of good things happening out there. Well, let's take we a look, to, you if, do, you, if you will, at a couple of, of, uh, oh, sure. of your works. And, and uh, give us kind of a, uh, a description of uh, what you saw as, as we began to look at uh, uh, some of these fine works. There's a piece that we see here. What, what is the title of this particular piece? It's, this, this piece is called No Water. No uh, Water. Uh, right. Um, and it, as people in the Caribbean know there are certain parts in the Caribbean that we, you know, they suffered water in terms of the lack of water, in terms of the lack of water facilities that's coming to, whether it's to that particular village or that particular house. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you have to leave your house and go to whether it's a sand pipe right. or to, to collect water. Sometimes you and we in North America forget that. So it reminds you of, or it brings back that thing that you have to go and get water, whether yeah. it's to go to bed or <coughs> to wash or things like that. And the, mm -hmm. the essence of it is capturing that motion, her leaving the house to go and get water oh, or right. coming back to and get I'm water. Looking at the, the strength it's displayed in the arm. Yeah, you know. Uh, I mean, if I think you if you do water every morning, that's, no, that, that, that's true. But it, but again, you know, the burden is on women to to do the, some of that lifting, the heavy lifting, and the continuity of maintaining that family. That yeah. See, that so kind of, like, and it, I mean, it goes all the way back from our slavery, and right. it brings so much, so many, so much, so much we can talk about it. Okay. But the capturing that that is an importance of that every morning that you have to do it. So sometimes right. we forget the little things that are important in our lives. So that's one of the things. Now this, this is done in oils? This is, a, this is watercolors. This is a watercolor. This is okay. watercolors. Okay, let's see if we can see the next slide uh, and, and look at this powerful particular piece. All right. Um, yes. So speak to us a little bit about this. So much is in expressions. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, this was a model I worked with. I worked with a lot of live, pe live models. Mm -hmm. um, and her expressions, I think it's, it kind of says it all. It's called I am, I am. And okay. one of the things um, in terms of connecting with people, and I think um, you are older than me, so you can surely speak about the experience of life that you might have gone through. Yes. Some of the good, bad, and the ugly. And bringing that to the surface and in the expression of the eyes, some of mm -hmm. the pain that we have carried and some of the burdens that we have carried, but yet showing it as showing us also beauty in it. Right. It's not also has a very strong uh, spiritual connection to that I am, I am. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, that that's kind of what 
immediately hit me once once you said what the title was. Yeah. And I looked in the face and seen the kind of the yeah. And one of the things that as, you, as we talk as we go a little further in that is that you know, as I mentioned earlier, we all have a story to tell. And as the artist, how can I capture your story and tell the world how important right. it is right. that people just not pass by it, That's that we right. truly step back and take a look at it. Mm. Even the man, the everyday man in the street, yeah, that's true. He wants us to hear what he's saying. Okay, yeah, that's important. Want to get the message out? Huh? Let's take, let's take a, another look at uh, one of your works, Robert. Uh, we got that coming up as as next. Okay, aha! What a, what a powerful statement this is. Uh, this one is I call it Calypso Blue, Calypso and it's watercolors Blue. as well. Uh -huh. um, I suppose let's we'll talk about the technique part about it. One of the things yes. I try to is I really don't do. If you realize, I won't do the skin tone, the average actual skin tone. So I push the color in that sense, so it don't have to be like the average skin tone. So in terms mm -hmm. of the technique side, I push it to all blue. Um, as I said, we call it calypso blue. So I made it the, the little boy in a blue blue state. Sometimes you hear about artists going through a blue state. Okay. So in terms of the color, when we talked earlier, and you started about the whole carnival right. expression, and sometimes where we get that connection from, and in, people know in the history of carnival, whether it's through the Caribbean or just Trinidad, it has such a kaleidoscope of color. That's true, yes. I mean, and then bringing that onto the portrait of mm -hmm. the little boy. You know, so people say that's. I see where the color comes from. I okay. see where sometimes where the movement comes from. I see where how you are able to capture that essence in terms of putting it all together. So there's always that connection. You just yeah, have to powerful. find it and yeah. just expressing it. Um, okay, so we, we got a few more minutes. So let's take a look at maybe a one or two more, uh, and so we can kind of really get a good feel. Uh, the powerful look and the stare, the look, the gaze, and uh, what is the title of this one, Robert? This, this one is called Stephanie, and it's a model that I, I've worked with, um, and it's just a very intense mm -hmm. um, graphite, which is red graphite I use drawing um, of her face, capturing just the essence of who she is, without Excellent. any much detail, and just basically just fo focusing on her face from an artistic point of view. Okay. Um, you know. And then sometimes, I mean, I show in your day of work, you meet people and you just says, what is this person thinking about? Oh what yes, yeah, the, the you know, curiosity factor. Yes, yeah. and you want to say it, but you know, you want to ask them without even getting into their, their okay. own personal lives. Well, so well, it's, it's interesting because uh, our, our time just zips by so fast. But, uh, but I mean, to, ta to really take a look at at this collage of of expression, you know, the different mediums that you use to portray that image of that look you want people to see and feel, uh, it's. It's, it's so it's so kind of important to be able just to express yourself. I mean, it's a yeah. I mean, we, and we, as it continues to say that some people have expressed it through semi-abstract, some do do it. Whether mm -hmm. you, as you said earlier, I think you had a show with somebody was doing with some cooking, yes, and you saw yeah. the same, some color as well. So you have different ways you can express it. Yes, so it's right. not just one thing. Um, the interesting thing about it is, is I choose the, as I said, figurative paintings to right. do it. And I think coming back to the people that we are. You know, I think it's so underestimated. We need to say more of it and show us in such a light, and especially a positive light. Yes, okay. And it's so important that we get that message it's out there. It's extremely important. Now, Robert, for folks that are, are interested in your work, uh, which has certainly created a, a curiosity and interest for my end now, <laughs> Uh, is you have to make you a collector now. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. But, but how, do, how do people reach you? Where, where can you... Uh, as, as I said earlier, I do have a website, which yes. is simply www.robertvree.com. Oh, right. Robert, Robert V, v as a Victor. Victor okay. yes. mm -hmm. um, also, you can find me on Facebook as, as Studio Robert Reed, or just punch in my name on Facebook, which every second person has a Facebook oh, page. Right. Oh. Um, but as I say, my website, or you know, as I said, I do have an email address, which is common, which is just vread2005 at msn.com. Um, okay. You know, but my through my website, it's uh, it's very easy. Just to punch in the name and something something viral. Yeah, the it's, it's, come it's out the Google. <laughs> the yeah, that's, that's the Google. a wonderful piece. Well, I wanted to kind of thank you for coming in and taking the time and giving me a particular real lesson and in terms of just hearing how you express you know the the, the talent you know it, it's it's uh it's, it's part of our avatar you know as we as we shared earlier in the conversation the the ability that is inside of you 
to be able to tap that resource and bring forth whatever disciplines or whatever medium that you, that you care to, to go into, which is a very powerful spiritual approach to the expression uh, uh, of who you are as a person and what that is to the culture. And it's a tremendous, tremendous contribution and to it. And just to add to all that, you have to remember, it's in all of us. We just have to right. find ways to we bring just it have out. To tap it. Yeah, in there. That's I real. Am. Well, listen, I want to thank you again, Robert, and, and speak to our audience in terms of uh, looking for ways to reach uh, Robert Reed, a fantastic artist and expressionist, and uh, information you can find on our website, meaning it's Avatar Foundation, A-V-I-T-A-R Foundation dot org. Or you can reach us at 914-664-7970. We have been blessed today. It's been a very uh, eventful day. Actually, and yeah. thank you for being part of that and, and being a witness to, to the other parts of it. So we want to thank all of you for tuning in. Look for our program coming up starting in January. It's called Carib Gold. Uh, it's a year-long celebration of the 50th anniversary of the countries of Trinidad and Tobago as well as uh, Jamaica. So uh, with that, we sign off with our, our uh, motto is that the dream is in the mind of the believer and in the hands of the doer. And you are not blessed with that idea or that dream without giving the power to make it happen. So with that, on behalf of Robert Reed and all of our guests we've had, we want to thank you and look to talk to you next week as we continue our approach to Carol Gold. God bless.